all of the extra money yeah. that comes with my check that goes straight into our savings account or we divvy it up to pay off things. But his check is purely bills. And some of y'all out there are six out of 10 and you talking about you don't want it. <laughs> I looked around and I just saw all these amazing women that are more than capable of being Miss USA. I just kept telling myself, if not you, then who? If not you, then who? Because listen, Deshana is in the building. I'm actually military. I did 11 years in the military. Wow, what was branch? Army. So wait, what is toxic masculinity though? Because I've been called toxic before. Oh no, well we've all had, we've all been called toxic. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've met millionaires that are monsters. Good you know, God. I've, I've dated millionaires that are monsters. Good God. So, and, and interesting enough, I think a lot of black women can relate to the fact that I feel like we're forced to be Today's show is going to be a good show, man. I am really excited today because we have um, the one and only Miss USA in the building today. I forgot the year. She'll tell us a year when she gets on. Uh, but she is a stellar. She is a sought after speaker, motivational speaker, an amazing podcast host, a newlywed wife to an amazing young black man uh, who's doing the thing. Um, and we're going to talk about it all today from how do you be the successful um, high earner, black, beautiful woman, uh, dating in the 30s, fine love, still running a business, and navigating all that. But before we get to uh, Deshauna, my dear friend who's in the building today, uh, man, I want to remind you two quick things. 70% of y'all are still dating me. You know, I think I am a handsome man. I need y'all to kind of marry me, not physically, but I need you to hit that subscribe button. We are almost at 800,000 subscribers. We're gonna hit a million this year. And our community is not just about, about subscribing. It's about, we have a community of, and we call our community E3. Well, we wanna expand in abundance, wellness, and freedom. That's what we're after. How do we get that financial freedom? How do we come whole? And how do we just really learn things that expands our life? And that's what we're gonna talk about today because about 60% of y'all are black ladies who follow me. And so her story is gonna resonate with you. Um, you've seen her all over, but you're not gonna see her the way you're gonna see her on this show. I promise you this much, all right? So do me a favor, hit subscribe, whether you're watching this on YouTube or and or podcast and join a community of like-minded people who really want to expand um, in abundance, wellness, and freedom. And then two, I want to thank my friends over at Chime uh, for sponsoring today's show. Don't forget, you guys, as we're making money, we need a checking account with no surprise fees uh, that can do some amazing things with our money. And check this out. You get paid two days earlier with this bank. They got a quick message for you. Check it out. What's going on, family? Listen, every day is a chance to make progress. Whether it's sticking to your budget, saving a little extra, or treating yourself to that guilty pleasure takeaway. And let's be real. We all need those little wins to keep us motivated and moving forward. Speaking of wins, though, let me tell you about my friends over at Chime. You see, I used to get hit with these hidden fees left and right, and it felt like I was constantly playing the financial game whack-a-mole. But when I discovered Chime, <laughs> no more monthly fees and no maintenance fees, just smooth selling all the way. So now, what set Chime apart is that it's not just a bank, it's a community. With Chime, you're not just another account number, you're a part of something much bigger. And I want you to join millions of us Chimers who are making strides towards our financial goals. You see, with Chime, you get paid two days early, no monthly fees, and access to over 60,000 ATMs for free nationwide. Plus, when you give your friend a boost, a little bit of extra money, and they can boost you right back for no fees. It's like having each other's back in a financial game. So here's the deal. I want you to head over to chime.com forward slash TTAO and enter promo code TTAO. When you open up a Chime checking account and activate your debit card, they're going to give you some lunch money. That's right. They're going to give you $10 right in your bank account. That is $10 for simply doing what you're doing. And that's opening up a Chime account. So what are you waiting for? Let's make progress together. $1 at a time. And speaking of progress, let's get back to today's show. 
So listen, go to anthonyoneal.com, get that information. I promise you, you will be blessed. But I don't want to prolong this interview anymore because listen, Deshana is in the building uh, for the first time, not the last time. Her husband's going to come on the next time because I got some questions for my brother. <laughs> I want him to talk. I saw all the interviews with your husband. Yes. <laughs> and you were talking, the guest host was talking, but your, I felt like my brother needed some more words, some more time. I'm like, I want to, if you watch it, I'm looking at the camera, bro, listen, I I got you. Yeah. You come on the show. It's me and you. Your wife is going to be here, but it's me and you, my God. Yeah. Uh, because I can tell um, how he won your heart. Uh, but I want to go back before you got married. Mm -hmm. You know, Deshauna, who is Miss USA. What year was that? 2016. 2016. It's been eight years. Eight years. I'm, I'm, I'm up there. <laughs> why? Why were you always in the the modeling uh, that that kind of world before that, or was that just something you just said, you know what, I'm gonna try it, and then that's it? That was something that happened by random. Okay. Because I'm actually military. I did 11 years in the military. Wow. What was branch? Army. Army. Yeah. The Army My dad did 38 years. Really? Fort Bragg. Oh, he, well, hold on now. Yeah. I, yeah. We were stationed at Fort Bragg for some time. Are you serious? Yeah. Well, both my parents served in the military as well, and my sister and brother. So, so did you go to high school there? No, I went to elementary. Okay. In Fort Bragg. Okay. Yeah, but I was born on Fort Benning in Georgia. What? Mm-hmm. Been there too. So I graduated. Um, I lived in Fayetteville, North Carolina, Fort Bragg for about eight, nine years of my life. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's good. So army. Wow. So you left the army and it went into the beauty pageant world? No. So I actually just got off the army in 2022. Wow. Very recent. Yeah. Very recently. Yeah. I was. Uh, in oh, Florida. that's two years ago. Two years ago. 11 years total. Mm -hmm. You got married last year? Yes. So you met your husband in the military? Yes, I did. Yeah. But I was reserved. So okay. I had a little bit more flexibility. Okay. Than those are active. Dudes. Okay. 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 Um, but I started pageants when I was 19. I was discovered in Target, and a lady walked up to me, said I looked like I was a beautiful girl that could be the next Miss USA, so I wow. jumped straight into pageantry. Wow. And that was in huh, 2009. Okay. And it just took off from there. I started competing every single year. Wow. For seven years straight, lost, 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 lost every year until I won Miss DC USA yeah. in December 2015. Wow. And then went on to represent DC at Miss USA in 2016. Mm hmm you know, there's a there there's a story right there. I'm a preacher, so I hear what you say and I also hear what you don't say. Mm -hmm. You lost. Lost. Seven years straight. And kept going. Kept going. Mm -hmm. For seven years. Yes. And so there was something on the inside of you that believed you could win still. Yeah, or a little bit of stubbornness. I okay. mean, it could be a combination of the two. I, okay. I felt like I, I just liked the way it felt. I think with myself being... A military brat, I really never had a chance to connect to that inner girl, mm. really connect to that feminine energy. So yes. pageantry kind of brought out that piece for me. Okay. okay. Makeup, heels, dresses was yeah. something that I was never exposed to. Yeah. My mom was actually a bus driver and a mechanic. So... Mama Deuce was working on cars? Yeah, she was. Yeah, she was a mechanic. And... um you know, we didn't grow up with a lot of dolls. And <laughs> <laughs> we grew up, you know, playing in trees and, you know, really being out there building forts. Like, wow. I was uh, just not really exposed to that girly side of myself. So pageantry exposed me to that, and I really loved it. You know what? I want to ask this question. I never, I, I watched all your interviews because I like to study my, my, mm -hmm. my guests. And Michelle, our show producer, gave me a lot of great notes on you. Um, and um, and I've been following you for a while. We've been following each other for a while, so I, mm -hmm. I see you. But I've always wondered this, because I used to date, you know, someone in that area. I ain't gonna say who, because you know, people start, you know, looking. Okay. Um, <laughs> I used to date a Miss such and such, right? Yeah. And um, there's not a lot of money in it. In terms of what? Like if you- Receiving money. Yes, receiving yeah. money. But y'all spend a whole lot of money. That's why most people that compete in pageantry usually come from a pretty privileged background because it's very expensive. I, that's what I heard. Yes. It's one of the reasons why I don't think that I was successful okay. because I just did not have the money. Wow. I did not have the money to invest in these five and six and seven thousand dollar gowns. That's so what I'm saying. I had my final year when I won on my seventh try, I took out a loan okay. or a PayPal credit. Okay. 
and it was for like four or five thousand dollars and I got sponsors and I just said I have to go out and do what I can to win this because it was a time in which there was an age limit. There's no age limit now. Okay. But back then it was an age limit. It was 26. Okay. And I was 26. So it was my last year. So I won on my last year of eligibility. Wow. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> outside of the name that you have now, which carries a lot of weight, let's let's be honest, mm -hmm. that gets you into doors. And when you get in those doors, you own it when you hit that stage. And you've been on some big stages. And I want to talk about that too, because uh, I'm, I'm curious to see how do you feel in those stages, mm. you know, as a black woman? Yeah. Because um, you're not just in black rooms. I see you in some good, strong white rooms, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I know all about the white world. Yeah. But it's like outside of that, what was the benefit for Deshauna since there really wasn't a financial gain? Right. You know, so you were still working the reserves. Did you have a full time job? No. So wow. for some years, what I did was I was speaking full time and doing content creation, which I'm not very good at. <laughs> but I was doing that from 2017 okay. up until 2020. OK. And then I became president and CEO of a women veterans nonprofit in 2020. OK, OK, OK. And then COVID hit, yep. and this is how I know God works, is because as soon as COVID hit, all of my speaking gigs for 2020 got canceled. Yep, yep. So by the grace of God, I had my full-time income coming in from president of the Women Veterans Nonprofit. So I did that up until last summer. Okay, okay. And the stress took over. I was overwhelmed. Last year, I was booked and busy as a speaker. Yep. I was uh, writing a book, launching my podcast, planning a wedding. Yeah. So I actually went to my husband last February mm -hmm. and you know, we're pretty bound together financially. Yeah. And I said, Hey, I kind of think I need to step down from this full-time job. What, what did he say? He said, sure. <laughs> there was no conversation. Oh no. Yeah. No, he was okay with it because he knew I was stressed. That's my God. Right <laughs> he there. knew I was overwhelmed. I was, it was a lot. I okay. think probably. Aside from 2016, when my mom passed away, mm. I think 2023 might have been my most depressed year. Okay. Which is insane because it was my most successful year, if I, we put it into context. I think that's for everybody. Yeah, it's like the more, it's just more on your plate. Exactly. So I became very overwhelmed and very depressed. Mm. And I think he could see that my mental health was taking a hit. Okay. So we sat down, talked about it, looked at the numbers, and I stepped down in wow. here. Oh, isn't that funny, though? Because I want to talk about that. I think there's a oftentimes I talk to people about, you know, how to get out of debt, how to make money. But we, we this is good. This, this is a good. show. your most successful year was your hardest year on you mentally. Right. Mm hmm. What did you do to get out of that stage? Because I think there's a lot of a lot of people watching this right now. Like, man, I, I'm relating with her, you know. I got a good job going on right now. Family is good. I got this going on, but I still feel this weight on me. Yeah. You know, my kids are doing good. Our marriage is doing good. I'm planning a marriage. I'm 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 launching this business and the business is doing great. Business is booming, but I still feel like a lot is on me. It took I, a while. Did it. And, and here's the thing too, you were married and you still had that weight. Mm -hmm. What which lets me know that you're a, you're a strong, minded, independent woman. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm like, I'm trying to say it correctly and say it because I'm like, yeah. how did you have all that and you were married? How did I have all of what? The weight. How did you feel all that? You know what I'm saying? If you yeah. was married and then you went to your husband later and said, hey, like, because yeah. most strong ladies, y'all know how to carry it and carry it good. Yeah. And it's not healthy. Right. And, and, and I'm so grateful that your husband immediately said, now let it go. I got you. Mm -hmm. You put some of the weight on him. Exactly. And that's what we are for. Like, we we want the weight. Like, I, I love the weight. But it's like, if I don't know the weight is needed to be right. transferred, I don't know. So how did you maneuver? Like, how did you say to Sean, okay, this, this is what I need to do, and this would be best for me? I had to really think about just happiness in general. Okay. And... I realized that pouring in, and I don't know 
if you worked in the nonprofit space before. A little bit, yeah. It's grueling. Yes, it is. Because you got to raise a lot of money, right? The fundraising. And that's the grueling part. It's the grueling part because I take it very seriously. I had employees that were dependent on my ability to fundraise so that they can mm-hmm. pay their bills and keep a roof over their head. I understand. And I was doing it successfully for wow. years. And I was able to carry that pressure okay. because I didn't have a husband to worry about. I didn't have a wedding to worry about. I wasn't writing a book. I wasn't launching a podcast. But when you put all of that into one year, it's just, it's too much. It is. It's too much. It is. So the stress became a lot for me. And I had to deal with even the shame of being depressed. Because everything that I prayed for, mm-hmm. if we're being honest, happened in 2023. Mm-hmm. I prayed for my speaking career to take off even further than it already has been. Boom, I, I prayed for, to become an author, I prayed to launch a mm-hmm. podcast, mm-hmm. and I, I prayed for a healthy marriage. Yeah. And I have all those things. Wow. And yet I'm not happy. So you're not only dealing with unhappiness, you're dealing with the shame of being unhappy, knowing that you have everything that you've prayed for. Wow. So I was really struggling with what is it exactly. And then I just realized that just, there's a such thing as having too much on your plate, no matter how successful that plate is, no matter how much monetary gain you're getting from it, you're still dealing with too many, mm-hmm. your hands are in too many pots. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And truthfully, we announced this already in March, so I could say it now, but Marvin and I got legally married last March. Mm-hmm. And we, our wedding was in Miami this past December, mm-hmm. 2023. Mm-hmm. So I was also dealing with the anxiety of marriage. Mm. And what's interesting is, you know, I know you always talk about having, you know, your two families and your mm-hmm. parents that are not together, but have successful marriages on both sides, very long term. Right. I don't have that. <laughs> okay. My husband's parents have been married for over 35 years. Wow. But. My mom passed away in 2016. She Mm -hmm. passed away and had not been remarried, but she married my dad very young. They broke up while I was very young. Wow. And my dad is now in his third marriage. So I have not been exposed to successful marriages Mm. and that drove my pessimistic mindset when me and him got married. And it's so funny because I'm always confused when I hear about people breaking up their first year of marriage and then they've been together for six, seven years. I'm like, what happened? Like, what shit? (laughs) I always think to myself, y'all just continue doing what you were doing. Doing. The marriage should be easy. Facts. But it's not. (laughs) For real. Things change because you are bound to this person. Okay. And there is a there's access that they have now that you're married Mm -hmm. that they didn't have when y'all were just dating girlfriend. Yeah. When y'all were just dating, they didn't have access to not only build you up, but they now have access to destroy you. That's my fear. Yeah. Cause that's real. So the vulnerability that comes with being married is so scary to me because I only know failed marriages. Mm. He only knows Successful. successful marriages. Right. So really, Dealing with the first year of marriage also was hurt my mental health as well. And it was nothing he was doing. It was a battle that I was fighting yeah. on the inside. Yeah. Because of what you saw. Because of what I've seen. Yeah. And then he's like, babe, we got this because exactly. of what he's seen. Because of what he's seen. Oh, this is so good. And that's why I understand why people want to date someone that not only comes from a healthy household, but from a two parent household because they have an optimism that people mm-hmm. like myself that comes from a single parent household, mm-hmm. we lack. Mm-hmm. I'm so pessimistic mm-hmm. at times, even as a motivational speaker. Yeah, yeah. I'm so pessimistic at times and I had to fight that inner fear and it took a long time to fight. But once I got through it, the trust, it's like you have to rebuild your trust again when yeah. you get married. It's yeah. like, I trusted you to be my boyfriend, yeah. but can I trust you to be my husband? Ooh. And even though they do everything right, he did everything right. Still, once we signed the papers and went to the courthouse, I think the devil just got in my ear and started saying, what if he does this? What if he does that? And just all these yeah. thoughts start going through your head. Yeah. And I just got scared. That That's real. 
-hmm. Did you communicate that with him? I did. Uh, and was it a hard conversation? I think the communication came later because I actually don't know if I knew what was happening. Gotcha. gotcha. But I started picking through every little thing he would do. I became nitpicky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Typical woman. A typical woman. <laughs> but, typical. but times it by 100, right? Oh, <laughs> oh, my Lord. It was rough. And I just, every little thing he would do, I would say to myself, is this a sign? Is this a sign? Is this a sign? Man. Did I make a mistake? And it, it became really rough on him where he's like, why, what is going on? Why do I feel attacked? Yeah. You know, every other day. So I just, I jumped heavily into therapy. That's so know, good. Connected more to my faith and I got myself through. That's you know, good. All of those emotions, but I, I felt bad. And me and him talk about it all the time. He was a real punching bag in 2023. He really was. And he still was with you. He was still with me. Yeah. I don't know too many men. Well, no, 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 no. Wait, I'm saying this again. I think men who love you and know, because he, he he probably knew why he was a punching bag, and he knew it wasn't your intentions. Right. It was what you've seen. And I'm pretty sure he had men in his ears his parents in his ears saying, baby, it's, it's going to pass. Yes. He, he had to. Huge part of that conversation. Ha mm -hmm. He, I'm, I, there's no way, because I don't know too many, um, I know men who would do that. What's a, here it is. There there are little boys in grown men's body that won't do that. That won't do that. But a man yeah. who has men counsel and men wisdom inside of him, mm -hmm. he, he going to do that. He'll be right there. Um, you know what's so funny is you, you said you can understand why people want their spouses or whoever they're dating come from healthy homes, right? Um, at two parent households. I think one of my issues is I come from a four parent household, right? And I've seen two mothers love uh, my father's totally different. Mm, okay, yeah, totally different. Yeah. My biological mom is is a you, but older. Okay. Very strong. Yeah. My biological mom, Mr. Breadwinner of the family, still to this day. Mm -hmm. Um, and I saw some things that she struggled with, mm -hmm. being her first kid. Mm -hmm. um, then I see my other my other mother, and I hate the term step because I have four loving parents, like. I can't, I feel so wrong saying step parents. I call my stepmother my bonus mom. I, listen, I, I, it's like, yeah. When I tell you my other mother, bonus mom, yeah. step mom, the only thing that makes her not my mom is I didn't come out of her womb. Right. But that woman loves the hell out of me. And I remember we had a conversation. And I don't want to get emotional on on here right now, but my father had a scare a few years ago, hmm. and she mentioned something to my father. She said, "Do you think Anthony still gonna love me if, if you go?" And hmm. I I almost wanted to cuss my mama out hmm. because I was like, "Mom, you are my mom. Betty Ann Gibbons is my mom to the day I die." But God sent me Terry Ross as my other mother, and I will make sure that you are taken care of. But my other mother is not. My mom, right. she's never had a job. Really? Okay. She's had a job, but love you, mama. She can't keep it. <laughs> because my dad, is, he's just a different kind of guy. He, yeah. He's the provider. Yeah. Like, babe, I don't want you going to the job if you're going to be upset coming home and then sex is whack and you ain't cooking and <laughs> we ain't going to church. Nah, just keep your behind home. So she just launched a daycare business and ran that for years. Mm. And then she's like, I don't want to do this no more. And now she ain't doing nothing again. <laughs> right. And so it's like, for me, I've seen healthy marriages in a different way. Yeah. I'm, I'm 40 this year. My biological mom, um, and other dads been married 39 years wow. and then uh, my four years younger than them so then my dad and my other mom has been married for 34 years and I'm like I've seen it mm -hmm. that does create a narrative in my head though does it you so you think it only works one way no it's like when I meet a woman if I don't see my mother traits in them I don't date them okay that's fair that's fair I mean, I think that that just goes with your preference is what you want in a woman. Yeah. <laughs>
It's true because it's yeah. like I have the middle ground. I want that strong woman, which I want to go there with you. Mm -hmm. But then also I want that strong woman to be feminine and soft. Like my dad will come home, dinner cooked, mama looking good, boy go to bed, take care of your dad. I mean, I'm like, Lord Jesus. Yeah. And then over here it was like my mama would work three jobs um, just to make sure that her family is taken care of to – I mean, it, it, I saw both, and I'm like, man, I want a woman who's going to work her butt off with me, and we build something, but then be soft. Yeah. And so I only know, I don't, which I don't need to see this, I don't see the soft side of you, but you have to have it because that man doesn't, your husband doesn't look like he has the straight, strong card all the way around women. Yeah. How is it that you've been able to be, build all this success over here? Yeah. And then navigate into this marriage with this successful brother. It was a lot easier than I expected. I've always considered myself to be, you know, the alpha female. Um, like you mentioned, someone that's very successful, straightforward, yeah. type A personality. Yeah. But, you know, it's interesting. I think that the military background kind of yeah. stereotypes me yes, a little bit. Yes, ma'am. So... Even when he first met me, he was nervous with me still being in the military, wondering if I could meet him at a, meet him in the middle. Mm -hmm. Okay. With him being a very masculine man You're and right. myself appearing to be a masculine woman. You keep saying appearing. Why do you say that? Because you I never were? I think I am. Okay. I actually don't think that that is who I am at my core. Okay. I think that I was forced to be that uh, that uh and, and interesting enough i think a lot of black women can relate to the fact that i feel like we're forced to be we're forced to be alpha females because we have no other way to protect ourselves if we're not in a relationship or have a father to protect us whatever the case may be mm. and although my dad amazing dad i'm gonna mm. go see him tomorrow actually but because he lives in woodbridge okay but um I have spent all the way up until Marvin came into my life, okay. I think for about 31 years, I have been an alpha female, masculine woman, okay. type A, very direct. Okay. I don't know if I really knew softness mm -hmm. until he came into my life. Mm -hmm. And he makes me very soft. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think he's such a beautiful person, but his presence melts me. Mm -hmm. And it makes me want to give him all I have. Okay, okay. Uh, to love on him, to nurture him, cook for him, clean for him. I feel like every woman, but especially black women, mm -hmm. we have the absolute capability at our core mm -hmm. to be feminine, soft women. Do you? But we need the man to be a healthy, masculine man. So right there, I'm single. Yeah. Um, a very much so of a masculine man. Yeah. Um, not good at sharing my emotions. Okay. In relationships, uh, because I have the fear of if it doesn't work, now you have all this information. Information right. that you can just throw. Right. And that is fearful, right? Mm -hmm. I'm 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 getting in tune with the emotions, but what would you say now, being married now? Going on a year. A year. Yep, yeah, a year um, legally married, mm -hmm. celebrating December. Um, what would you say to me mm -hmm. and to the other single men watching this show right now that black women need from men to tap more into y'all's femininity? You need healthy communication. What does that look like, an example? That means being able to disclose your, your feelings <sighs> in a healthy way. Okay. But you know it's interesting because you remind me very much of my husband because I was actually his first committed relationship. Wow. Yeah. How old was he then? 28. Okay, okay. 28 okay. Um, is when we got together, and I thought that was a red flag. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh-uh, you were uh, a girlfriend bro. before. You were looking for all the red flags yeah, and I everything. Was, I was ready to run. <laughs> Let me tell you. And, you know, he wasn't someone that was very open. He was very private. Doesn't I'm, say how he feels. That's like, me. None of that. I'm being honest. And, you know, when you know, you know. Yeah. When the right woman comes along, you will melt in okay. a way. Okay. And I think what women 
need from men for mm-hmm. us to get in touch with that femininity is one, and I know you're in therapy, you talk about yes. it all the time yeah. um, on your podcast, but what I would recommend is healthy communication, okay. creating a safe space, okay. being upfront and direct about okay. what you want, how you're feeling, okay. what your expectation is. Mm-hmm. I feel like sometimes we're not interested in disclosing certain information because we feel like we're gonna scare somebody off. Mm-hmm. But I always believe in destiny and fate and that what's meant for you is for you. Yes, ma'am. And the right person will not be scared off by anything. That is good. That you say. So if you do scare them off, that just was it that was, was not person. your person. Now, obviously, don't get reckless. <laughs> That's true. Because even good people, right. you know, have their own um, barometer. That's word. Yeah, they have they have their own barometer for what they're going to accept. So yeah. if you, if you're coming to me, you know, saying crazy things, and I'm going to run away. Right. But if you're coming to me, you're just honest and and really transparent. Yeah. And you'll be able to feel it and see it in that okay. person. Okay. But. I, Everyone talks about the masculinity of black women, and I always question if they understand how much we've been forced to be put into that position. Yeah. Even for myself, I don't even think I knew what marriage did in terms of the weight that is lifted off of you once you have an actual healthy partner. I've mm-hmm. been in multiple relationships, and mm-hmm. that masculinity has never gone away in those relationships mm-hmm. because I was not with a healthy partner Mm. and I was with a individual that thought that uh, they were filled with toxic masculinity. So wait, what is toxic masculinity though? Because I've been called toxic before. Oh no, well we've all had, we've all been called toxic. <laughs> I, 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 I was about to judge for a second. I'm like, hey, I've been called toxic honest. a few times. Yeah, I was like, wait, that's toxic? Like, wait, what? You know, uh, I feel like Devin, was Devin Franklin on that panel with you? Mm-hmm. He had an interview and the interview went something along the lines of how to tell the difference between a healthy person a healthy partner and a toxic partner was whether or not they were looking to be served or whether or not they were in service to another person. Does that make sense? And I thought the way that he described it was so beautiful. That is good. And what I define toxic masculinity is someone that is not only aggressive, Mm -hmm. but all they want to do is take in control. They're never in a position to give Mm. unless there's some incentive for them for them to Mm -hmm. give Mm -hmm. and i think that that is the type of relationships that i've always been Mm. in so i've always felt Mm. that they weren't interested in being of service to Mm. me as a partner Mm -hmm. and because of that i've got my guard up Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. what comes with putting up a wall and protection is that type of energy yes, ma'am. that's pouring out of us. So really when a woman is, in my opinion, many of us, I believe at our core, are not built to be mm. masculine, but I feel like a lot of us don't feel protected. Mm. And then therefore that puts us in a position to be on guard. Mm. That in itself looks aggressive mm-hmm. from the outside. Mm-hmm. So once I got into a marriage in a relationship in which I felt protected, all of that melts away. Mm-hmm. And that's all I feel from him 24 seven is okay. he's constantly in service to me as my partner. And yeah. I am constantly in service to him yeah. as my husband. And it's so much easier when you're with somebody that has created a healthy environment for you to be the best version of yourself and the worst version of yourself. So good. Sometimes we're not partnerships we're not in a position to give healthy partnership so good. because we don't like the version of who they are right now but we can't get the good of a person 24 7 they're always going to have faults and they're going to be human yeah. so there are moments in which he's not at his best but i don't ever want him to think that he doesn't have my protection or my service is dependent on whether or not he's in the best position in his life or the healthiest position or whatever the case may be And now, no matter what version I am or what version he is, we are constantly giving to one another. Mm. It seems it feels like a highway sometimes where it's like constantly one one person's there's so much coming into me from him and then there's so much I'm giving out to him as well. 
And it's a beautiful experience. And it's crazy because I did not think it existed. <laughs> and, you know, you mentioned also toxic masculinity. I've been, majority of my relationships, I believe the men have had anger issues. Okay. They are wall punchers, let yeah. me tell you. I used to be in apartments and there'd be holes in the wall everywhere. <laughs> and, you know, it's just he gets upset, he punches a wall. But I'm used to that. I love my dad. Right. I love my dad. Right. Uh, my dad is military. Okay. And I feel like my dad had anger issues gotcha. uh, when we were coming up. And my mom had anger issues. Gotcha. So I've also had to reckon with the fact that I have grown up in a space in which I've been surrounded by individuals that have anger issues and therefore I accept dating men with anger issues. Mm. And then I started realizing that those anger issues turn into abuse, which they have done. Mm. And I've had to, you know, well, that's the same before a different day, but I've had to almost escape with my life one time, the relationship before Marvin. Wow. Where I had to escape and he was in the military and um, I had to, I was living in Hawaii, I had to escape. But well, that'll be another day. Wow. But and, you know, we talked about it before where I feel like beauty queens, we attract certain types of men. Yes, yes. And sometimes they're narcissistic. Sometimes they're abusive. And sometimes they're only with us because of what we physically look like. Right. And they forget that we're human. Right. And that's always tricky as well. Wow. Mm -hmm. So now in this season, because you've been through, you've, you've, You've been through a lot from abuse earlier on to uh, to this yeah. relationship before Marvin. Now you're in this great relationship. So let's look at your life today. Mm -hmm. You have a beautiful relationship with, with Marvin, your husband. You have a successful speaking career. Yes. Um, you're making a lot of money now. Mm -hmm. um, how are you balancing that within your marriage? with Marvin? It's pretty easy, actually. A lot easier than I expected. So we consider ourselves not to be 50-50. We actually consider ourselves to be 100-100. Okay, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I'm just saying, because every time we touch on this subject, uh -huh. you know it's going to go viral. So I was basically- I know, I'm ready. Instead, you know? So you, uh, I'm going to be real. Yeah. No disrespect, Marvin. You are a, a, what the world would say, a 10 out of 10. And Thank you're you. telling me that you contribute to the su financial success of y'all's marriage. 100%. Correct. And some of y'all out there are 6 out of 10, and you talking about you don't want to <laughs> <laughs> What in the world? Okay, which I, I am so grateful that you said that. It is uh -huh. refreshing because mm -hmm. it sounds like you have a true partnership, you and Marvin. Correct, how we define it. Yeah. How you define it, yeah. right? But how I'm defining it too, because mm -hmm. it's like, you're like, hey, I'm not giving 50-50. We're putting everything into everything one. Everything into one pot. One pot. Correct. Everything goes into, so let me start by saying his check, and you know how entrepreneurship is. Right. Money is up and down. Every month is different. Some months you don't get anything. Right. What career field is he in without saying too much of his personal business? He's an engineer. He's an engineer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he can have great months, great, great years, and then it could okay. just be like, uh, it's a slow time. Well, his check is consistent. Okay. So he has his steady salary. It's mine that where I make a lot of money, but every month looks different. Yes, I got you. So his check pays the bills. Okay. It pays all the bills because that check we know is gonna hit on the first, all okay. the bills come out. Yes. Now my check, which comes in sporadically. Yes, I get still it. comes into the same bank account. Okay. That's when we try to cover our investments, yes. pay off our debt. Yes. Um, we're looking to start a family next year. Okay. So paying into a future college kids fund. Yes. Paying into our savings account, our down payment for a home. Um, all of the extra money yeah. that comes with my check, that goes straight into our savings account or we divvy it up to pay off things. But his check is purely bills. This is sounding so good to me. Right yeah. <laughs> it's music to my ears. And you know, I think it's important, and I thought it would be difficult, but it's a lot less difficult than I thought because we literally lay out our finances every time money comes in. And the way I've seen our debt deplete, the way I've just seen us be able to connect and have really hard conversations about money. Yeah. I love seeing us building each other. Wow. 
and no one's money is necessarily their money. Now, do we take a certain amount of money if it's extra left over to go into our personal accounts? Yeah, but it all comes in one pot first and then we divvy it up. Did y'all do that from the very beginning or did y'all no. have, oh, so how did you do it in the beginning? Once we got married. Okay, once you got married. Well, yeah. Love it. And how did y'all have that conversation? Like, how would you how would you suggest other ladies in your position who are coming to the table with mm -hmm. something? Because I have, I can say it, it was on my show. One of my friends, she just, she's getting married. Mm -hmm. And she's like, yeah, we'll never combine bank accounts. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, yeah, I'll never do that. No, my money is my money, his money is his money. I'm gonna give him part of the rent. I mean, and the mortgage, and da, 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 da. But I'm like, with where you all are going, could that work for you and your, your husband now? It wouldn't work for me. Um, and you know what's interesting is I actually drove that conversation on you? combining in totality. The woman did. I did. And it is because I have, she was the former owner of the Miss DC USA franchise. Her oh. name is Carla Crawford. She's my okay. other mom, I consider. Yeah. And she talked to me, she's been married for over 30 years, and she talked to me about, I just went to her for marriage advice. I don't yeah. really have anybody else to call. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, although I think I have marriages around me, I wanted a marriage that is so long mm -hmm. and consistent. And I said, you know, how do you guys manage finances? Because like you said before, I make more than he does, mm -hmm. but he makes great money. Right. <laughs> but I do make a little bit more than he does. And I said, I'm a little nervous about how we're gonna run the finances. And she said, the best thing that you can do and the best thing that myself and my husband does is we combine in totality. It is transparent, it's clear. Mm -hmm. And that's the only way for you to build, right. in her opinion. And this lady lives in a mansion in Potomac, and I mean, she's she's oh, yeah. up there. Yeah. She said, how can you build generational wealth without combining mm -hmm. you all together mm -hmm. to pass down financially to your children and your children's children? Mm -hmm. How can you do that without having that transparent conversation and absorbing mm -hmm. all of your assets into one? Mm -hmm. um, and I remember thinking to myself, I ain't gonna do that. <laughs> I ain't gonna do that, honey. I got too much now, I don't know. <laughs> and uh, after I sat down and thought about it, I said, I'm going to go all in mm -hmm. with this. I'm mm -hmm. going to trust, have faith, Whew. have faith. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to trust the fact that he has shown me that he is financially responsible. Mm -hmm. And I want our kids to walk into a household in which everything is out there in the open and we are investing together into our kids' futures. Mm -hmm. And I knew there was no way to do it without combining combining and be 100-100. And I just said, let's go all in. So once we put it all into one pot and checks started depositing and we sat down and we started doing the numbers, it, it got so easy. Easy. And I'm pretty sure when y'all look at it like, damn, we doing this thing. Oh yeah, like you know once what I'm saying? see the credit cards right. going down and the debt going down, the student loans. I'm like, man, we're really like easy. It's very easy, and it gets you excited. Yeah. What's going to eventually happen when y'all pay off, you know, all your consumer debt and y'all see the savings now start stacking up? Right. Watch how y'all spend differently. Mm -hmm. Because like, wait a minute, we can put more money into that. Wait, we can put more money into our kids' fund. Right. Wait, we can get into a house quicker. It's like it's just when when two come together. Like, you're gonna even be speaking better. Right. Um, he's even gonna be advancing in it. Cause like money just shifts everything when we see we have access to more. Right. And so I just love the fact that you all are doing that. I just wanna commend you and thank you though for, for saying, you know what? As strong and as successful as I am, I trust my husband. Right. And it's not just I trust husband. Are you a Christian? Yes. Okay, cool, mm -hmm. great. I trust God. Yeah. And the Bible says when two get married, not relationship advice, I am still single. I'm just a biblical preacher. Um <laughs> when, two, when 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 two get when two come together, they're no longer single. Right. We combine as one. As one. Mm -hmm. So we can't say we're married and still operating as single people. Mm -hmm. That's just my philosophy. But I agree that you you should have your own spending account. All right, babe, we got all the products taken care of, investments, debts allocated. You got $1,000. You can come back home with a Louis bag if you want. As long as right. out of that account, 
But you can't touch the main account without us having a conversation. Exactly. And that's exactly how it works. Wow. See, this is this is good. <laughs> like this, this is some really good stuff because I'm like, I'm curious, like I ain't never met you more, but I love you, brother. I gotta ask this question though, because I know ladies are saying this. I've heard ladies say they cannot respect a man who doesn't make double their income. Wow. Hmm. And some of them are still single. You're married. So marry a woman. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What what would you tell a woman who is successful like you, single, and saying, I mean, and she a 10 out of 10, a beauty pack, all that type of stuff. And she's like, girl, I can't respect no man who who won't make no more, who made more than me. I mean, well, who doesn't make more than me. Like literally, I've heard people say that. Oh, I find that so interesting because there's so much more to a human being than just what they make. Mm. I've, I've met millionaires that are monsters. Good you know, God. I've, I've dated millionaires that are monsters. Good God. So when I think about that, I feel like we don't look at high moral character mm -hmm. as a value. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's our problem. Yeah. yeah. I think it's such a deeper problem. And I don't know if people have been surrounded by individuals that are emotionally intelligent that are kind and sweet and loving. Like, I feel like if you've been around that type of human being, mm -hmm. their money is a bonus. Yes. Because yeah. just at their core, yeah. they're incredible. Yeah. Eager yeah. stomach, please ignore it. Oh, she, she's hungry. <laughs> please ignore it. <laughs> I hope the mic has to pick it up. You see that. If... But, um, you know, he has grown financially over the years wow. since we've gotten together. And when we first got together, he was making less than he is making now. and. Um, I just, I can't even explain how amazing of a human being he is. Yeah. Engineers make great money. And he's gonna make more. And he's gonna continue to grow and make more. So, right. you know, while I don't necessarily condone dating someone for them for their potential, yeah. I always say date people for their capacity. Ooh. Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> date them for their that's capacity. That's good. And that's, that's what we good. talk about being equally young. Yes, ma'am. So it's less about potential. It's literally what's their capacity to succeed, to I accomplish. Love it and to take care of you and to be a provider. And you know a provider when you see one. Yes, ma'am. And I don't I don't think anybody needs to be a millionaire. I think when we come together, you know, we're if, if you're making great money and they're making great money, yeah. I mean, when you come together, I think that it's awesome. And if the lifestyles are similar, yeah. if we like to travel, we like, you know, me and him, we like to splurge and do first class every now and then. Mm -hmm. And I feel like Money is a part of that top five priority. Absolutely. I definitely don't think it should be number one. No. I definitely think values and high moral character should be at the very top of that list. And if you have that, and you have the capacity to be something amazing, and I see that in you, and you're building it, and you're actually in the process of making that come to fruition. Yeah. I'm I'm ready to stick it through. Are you just a good? Are you a good human being? <laughs> no, that's so good. I agree. I think that there are some ladies, but I think it's on both sides. Mm -hmm. I think one of the main reasons why I'm so single is because of my physical expectations Your for the ladies. Your physical expectations? Yeah. What do you mean by that? Physical of, of a woman. Yeah. Physically Physi what she looks like. Yeah. That's the reason why you say that. Well, because I mean, I just think I was just immature. Oh, okay. I passed up on, um, yeah. I should have been married by now, honestly. I should have been married in my 20s. I had an amazing woman in my 20s and literally she was ready to marry me back then. But my career started booming mm. and that career started looking real good and I said, I can get something better. Ooh. Left her right there in that city. I'll never forget when I was moving the city. I'm, I can't say the name of the city. As soon as I say it, people who know me will put it together and I don't wanna be disrespectful. Yeah. Cause she's happily married with, um, you know, with, with the family and I want to respect where she's at, and I'm completely healed from it. Yeah. But one thing I've learned for me over this last six months, um, I've dated wrong, and I've had physical expectations that wasn't right. Uh, yeah. I want a woman who I'm physically attracted to, yeah. but if she didn't have that quote-unquote big behind, mm -hmm. I wouldn't even entertain her. Wow. Right. Yeah. Um, and... And, and in dating, I just didn't date right. I never had the wrong motives, but I wasn't dating correctly. As far as in, hey, I'm dating you and I'm dating her and I'm dating her and I'm getting to know all of y'all. Not having sex with y'all, but I just get into some different people. And so now I, as I've evolved, I'm like, hey, you know what? 
dang, Anthony, the reason why you're single is not because you dated this horrible person or because of her. It's because of the actions that I made. Mm. And I didn't, I wasn't, I wasn't willing to accept the fact that it's me. And then also I realized too, in therapy and within mentorship, I can't marry just for love anymore. Oh. You know? What else can you marry for then? Legacy. Huh. Okay. If she can't help, if, if she can't partner with me to build a legacy. Yeah. Okay. Um, then I can't, I can't even love you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I marry for two L's, love and legacy. But that goes into your attraction. I mean, you're just yes. attracted to a driven woman that's have ready to. to build. Yeah. Have to. Mm -hmm. And I've met some, and I feel so bad sometimes. I'm like, dang, you're so dope. You're just not as driven as me. Ah, and yeah. then I would be like, I don't want to tell you that you're not driven because you're not going to understand it. So then I'll right. just disappear. Oh. And that's not right. You're the ghoster. <laughs> <laughs> you're but, the and that's not right. Yeah. That is that is not right. I, yeah. I, I, I've I owned that and I've, Mm -hmm. My therapist has told me that. She was like, Anthony, I understand your thinking of why this is not working is correct. How you're going about it is incorrect. Right. Because that's still somebody else's soul. And, and it's like, yeah, but it's not easy to tell a woman that you don't find that. Because if she says, well, why? And then you tell her, she's going to have a million and one questions and draw out the conversation. Sure. And I just don't want to go through that because then she's like, well, Anthony, what would you, would you rather tell the truth and get the million and one questions? And when she gets over her emotions, she respects you because you told her the truth. Or you ghost her. Now she's telling all the girls she just ghosted her. I said, there's no way in my job. As long as you communicate the truth the best way you can, we're going to hate you regardless. Say, say it one more time. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter what That you is say. the truth. It doesn't matter what you say. No matter what we say <laughs> as men, y'all are not going to like us. Yeah, like if I feel like a man tells me you're just too driven and he was honest with me and like really, I'm going to hate you regardless. If I liked you and I really wanted to be with you, I'm going to have a problem with you regardless. But you should be honest though. You shouldn't ghost. But it is. But if I'm gonna get the same result, Deshaunna, why am I gonna tell you the truth? I may as well just go shoot it. Because she has clarity and she deserves that. Okay, you got clarity at my expense of now you hating me like I'm the I bad mean, guy. It's not extra. It's I'm the bad guy. Yes. I mean, that's something we have to reckon with as women. As well, there's nothing you can do. Whatever. <laughs> 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 Okay, but if you tell me I'm to this or to that or not enough this and not enough that, I really believe that no matter how you put it, I'm just, I'm going to have a problem. But I appreciate the clarity. Ghosting me is always going to have that question in my mind as to why I hate him. But now I know why I hate him because he <laughs> left me for whatever reason. And I can respect that. I think mm -hmm. my biggest problem with ladies in the past, today, I don't care what you say anymore because it's like I know who I am and my wife is going to love the hell out of me because I'm right. gonna love the hell out of her way before she loves the hell out of me. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I I am that guy to where I want to serve. I can't wait to serve. Um, I can't wait, I'm sorry, Lord. I can't wait because I'm content and happy where I am. But when God puts that woman in front of me, oh my gosh, uh, I'm sold. Um, but you know, you're right. No matter what we say, men are going to be hated. The because problems, you're a good man. Right. If Ooh, you were a crappy, if you were a crappy man, you could leave and that's okay. I've had men I'm walk away and it's like, I didn't want you anyway. If, if, uh, because a woman lost a good man. That's what, you know what, my therapist said the same thing. She was like, if you were just out here just doing X, Y, Z and treating me in a kind of way, they wouldn't be saying nothing about they you. They wouldn't care. But because you're moving like this and because you're saying this, now the da da da, but I'm like, but why? I think, um, I was at a round table with guys. Mm -hmm. Our biggest complaint with successful, beautiful, amazing ladies is if it doesn't go well, y'all tell everybody. <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> and then you don't, you don't tell the whole, the whole story. Correct. You only tell the woman emotional side and some of the truth of, well, he did this, he did that, but you don't tell the whole story. But do men tell the whole story? I've, but see, that's the thing. I don't think men tell the story at all. Oh, well, hold on now. I'm, I'm not around men to where... You're you know around some saying? good men. 
Right. Because I only because I've dated narcissistic men, they're the ones that want to make sure that the story does not look like they were at fault. But you're not a narcissistic man, and I'm sure the people at the table were probably those that just, hey, we, it didn't work out, et cetera, et cetera. It's usually crappy men that want to make sure that they appear like they were the nice shining armor. Yeah, but you know, like my my, my homeboy, uh, my partner CJ Nurse, my my main uh, for, for camera guy. You know, he went through a divorce a couple of years ago. He just told me we went through a divorce. That's it. Like he ain't, he ain't bashing the woman because you know what? That's the mother of his child. Not a lot of men are built like that, though. And usually good men attract other good men. Right. So y'all don't hear about the horror stories that we've experienced as women where a man is around spread rumors about us. Are you serious? Oh, yes. Oh, those. Oh, yes. I was about to say something. This is a, this is a Christian foundation show. <laughs> but, but that's some garbage, though. I've yes. never been around men who, even if I know the woman... I was about to say something. I don't want to get in trouble. Even if I know the woman <laughs> was trash, right? Respectfully, right? When I say trash, she's not the trash of a woman. She's tr she, uh, I need to rewind that because I that's not right. No woman is trash. But even if the woman wow. wasn't the woman for the that man, yeah, yeah, right. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, I got to clean that up mm -hmm. because I think that everyone, some someone else's trash can be someone else's treasure. Correct. And so just because she wasn't the one in that relationship, it doesn't mean that she's a bad woman, just wasn't one for that person. So I don't really feel as if I have the right to speak negative. Like my ex-fiance, she's an ex-fiance for a reason. Mm -hmm. Me and her just had uh, dinner um, last year. Oh, uh, um, last year we had dinner. Man, it was a great conversation. Me and her broke up years ago and I was able to give her clarity, but I've never not one time spoke negative about her. That's good. When I'm on this platform, people ask, she's an amazing woman. She's a strong woman. She's probably the strongest woman I've ever dated and seen in my life. Yeah. Um, but there's a reason why we're not together on both sides, mm -hmm. right? But she's never talked bad about me neither. Like, I've never heard none of her friends come to me and say anything negative. Um, I, and we have a lot of close friends in the same circles, and they, 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 don't, they don't come back. And I'm just like, that's just maturity to me. Yeah. You know, but this has been a great show. It's a good one. <laughs> so I want to end on this up because you have an amazing podcast that you're yes, doing. Yes, yes. And I, I had an opportunity to watch one of your shows, um, and, and I love it. I, I, I love it. You you keep it real in there. Thank um, you. And she's sitting on the couch, y'all, having sitting a little, the couch. little <laughs> mic and conversation. <laughs> what, what can um, the ladies get from that podcast? So it is a self-care, self-love, and self-improvement podcast. Love it. So it is all about those deep intellectual conversations yes. about experiences. Yes. And really just how we can grow. To me, it's therapy. Okay. I'm not a therapist, but being having this podcast is therapy to me. And it's been therapy for a lot of people because I am, like you said, very transparent and honest. You are. And I talk through a lot of, and that's why it's called Sour Loss Sweet Lessons. Okay. Is that the, it's all these negative experiences that I've turned into positive learning and actionable changes yes. in my life to becoming a better version of Deshauna. Yeah. So I always, you know, challenge people that when they come onto the podcast at the very end, I say, here are the lessons, here are your takeaways, mm -hmm. so that they can walk away knowing how to make changes and improvements in their own lives. So I definitely challenge you all to go on to Apple Podcasts, YouTube, check out Sour Lost Sweet Lessons. It's yes. such a good podcast. You, are, you guys are going to experience an even more transparent side and vulnerable side of myself. I saw it. And your husband's been on yours. Yeah, he has. Yeah, he's been on it. I enjoy that conversation. I just love seeing y'all's dynamic and how... Uh, you're leading with that, and that's just that's just real good. It's a great podcast, you guys. Go check it out. Um, sour losses. Sour loss, sweet lessons. Sour loss, sweet lessons. Yes, I like that. Apple Podcast, YouTube, YouTube, Spotify. Uh, Spotify. Child is another one, but I forgot. Oh Lord, just go. Really, Apple Podcasts <laughs> yeah. and YouTube. Yeah, just, just those two. Those all that matter. <laughs> and, it'll, and it'll be good. And we're gonna put her Instagram in the show notes. She also has a great book. For motivational speakers, right? Yes, it's called uh, the Speaker's Blueprint. Yes. It's for aspiring speakers. It's an awesome ebook with all these tips and things that I've learned over the years Love as it. a speaker and people that are either trying to launch their speaking business or just increase it. Wow, it's a good book. And you've been speaking for how long now? 
seven years, since 2017. And you're doing that full time now? Full time. Wow. Full time. Hmm. Y'all, y'all may see her again. Yeah. <laughs> have me I, on I, have, I have some ideas. Yeah, I need to be at a round table. I've been looking at y'all have these little conversations, Listen, group conversations. I'd love to be I, in I it. I got some ideas. We'll talk about it off the show. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> y'all, listen, we're going to drop all her information in today's show notes. You guys, listen, go over to her channel. You all know me. I don't have a whole bunch of guests on my show anymore because I really just want to be make, I want to make sure that I'm being very wise about who I bring on our platforms. Um, and Deshauna, it's actually Dr. Deshauna, ain't it? Well, it's honorary, so it's honorary, honorary don't yeah. mean nothing. Doctor Deshana uh, is on the show, and this woman is a healthy woman, not a perfect woman, a healthy woman, mm, I like and that. and I love that because you're going to hear some about her imperfections on the show, yeah. and how she was able to turn it around, learn from it, grow from it, um, and turn it into a healthy situation. And so I I am asking my E3 family to go check out her podcast, subscribe. Um, and if you want to learn how to speak, I've I've watched some of her speaking engagements. And y'all know me, I'm very critical because I am a speaker as well. Uh, but this woman knows how to articulate um, her words, entertain the audience, deliver valuable content that can help transform your life if you apply the lessons that she teach. And so what I love about that is you're gonna see that come into her podcast and then you'll see her podcast come onto the stage. And so who you get is who you get on stage, on podcast, in person. The only one who sees something different is her husband and the Lord Jesus Christ. But all of us get the authentic uh, woman who she is. So go check her out, and I promise you, you'll enjoy it. All right? Love you all. We're way over our time, y'all. This normally happens when we have good guests on the show. And so I am so grateful. God bless you. We'll see you soon. Peace out.